All right, guys, what's going on? This is me, Hi Sebastian. Um, Doug Jenkins and I from iMix Master teaming up to show you some Ableton tutorial videos. Uh, a little bit about myself, I produce electronic dance music, um, anything from progressive house, electro house, drum and bass, uh, and a lot of different other kind of stuff on the side too. But uh, basically what I'm bringing to the table right now is I'm gonna give you some Ableton tutorials. Um, and we're gonna start off with some dance music. So to start off, I uh, usually start off with the drum kit, and with that in Ableton, I use the drum rack. You can find that in its stock plugins. All right. So dance music is known for a lot of layers and crisp highs, deep lows, and it's just club thumping. But today we're not going to really focus on the sound quality. I'm just going to kind of show you how to do some structures and stuff like that. Alright, the most important element of the drum track is going to be the kick drum. Now the kick drum is going to be on every downbeat. And the tempo that I'm using right now is 128 uh, beats per minute. And the reason why I do that is because it actually lines up with how many bars we're going to have is going to be exact. So for example, if I look over here, every 32 bars is exactly one minute. So when I'm sequencing this, I know that the amount of bars that I need to have a dynamic change at it's going to be an exact timing kind of thing. You know, I know like one minute into the track, it's going to be a big change. Three minutes into the track, four minutes, whatever. It's going to be an even number. All right, let's start with a basic uh, drum beat, basically. So we set every downbeat, um, and let's see what I got. That sounds pretty good. All right, the next most important thing, just like any other genre, is going to be your clap and your snare. Um, dance music, I like to use snares a little more than claps, but I always end up layering both of them just to get some sort of a nice uh, blend of the two. So we'll start off with the snare. All right, that's pretty good. Timing is on. Let's add the clap on top of it. So if you notice, a lot of dance music tracks, if you listen to the beginning of them, they start off very basic. Um, usually kick drum and a snare. Sometimes they start off uh, without any percussion. Most of the time, uh, for the use of DJs using their music, uh, you know, to make crowds jump basically they need a mixing period of 30 seconds to a minute to be able to blend two tracks together so this is crucial at the beginning of a track for it to be very basic all right it's lacking something we need a hi-hat so the hi-hat is on every upbeat so the kick is on the downbeat and the hi-hat is going to be on the upbeat so it's going to give you a nice kind of driving sort of motivating feel. Be creative. You can choose any kind of drum samples you want. This is the basic pattern. Uh, just kind of watch me and listen. All right, that's pretty good. Notice how these two hi-hats just kind of give it some sort of swing. Alright, sometimes people say, oh well, it's exactly on, it sounds like a machine. Well, we can easily fix that. Um, and what I'm going to do is do a control one, I'm using PC, so I'm going to do a control one to kind of make this grid a little bit smaller. And I'm going to zoom in.
Okay, so see how it's exactly lined up on 1.2? We can actually make that sound a little more lively by making this grid smaller by using Control-1. Great. Select one of your sounds. I'm going to use my uh, snare. And I'm going to put a little bit ahead of the clap just to kind of see what it sounds like. It's going to sound like natural um, is the way I like to call it because there's if I'm clapping and somebody else is clapping at the same time, we're not going to be clapping exactly at the same time. There's going to be some sort of delay between myself and the other person. It's really apparent um, when you go too far, but you can create a nice groove if you can get just the right amount. Let's try offsetting the, uh, the clap backwards. Let's inverse them. All right, that's pretty good. Very basic. Uh, next element that I probably add in a dance track is going to be a bass line. So let's see what I did here. I want you to remember that I'm not really going for sound quality right now. I'm just kind of showing you some basic patterns and structures. So the darker these notes get, the more red they are uh, in Ableton. It means the higher the velocity is. And these white ones are actually MIDI notes that are, aren't playing. I had them in there because I had octaves going on. It just it didn't end up being what I wanted to, to do in this particular track. Now, if you notice my grid, um, it's set up on quarters right now. Some of the uh, some of the MIDI notes, the ones that you can't see, and like these particularly C twos, um, not that one, this one, this one, they're not lined up with the grid. But now they are. I can do a Control One, and it'll bring me. It'll allow me to offset them, basically. So I'm going to deactivate some of these notes. Really, this is all you need um, to have a basic track, honestly. Uh, choose a key that you want your bass line to be in, and go ahead and go with the flow. The next step is going to be usually adding some sort of atmosphere chords to fill in um, the background. Uh, you can also use this to be more of like a driving element if you do stabs. But uh, I have a nice sound that I took some time to design and uh, it's fitting the track pretty nicely. Uh, I actually just want to let you guys know that this track is not taking the direction that you think it's going to. So. Basically what I'm playing here is I'm playing a uh, C minor 7 to, uh, to a different voicing on the end. Alright, sounds pretty good, sounds pretty basic. Uh, let's add another layer. Remember, this is not how the song is going to sound uh, as an actual song, the final product. This We're just creating uh, a main groove, I'd say. All right, next I'm going to add like a, uh, I need something different, I need some sort of melodic input. I know the chords are there, uh, but I might want to add a little extra element. All right, the next thing that I want to show you is actually a cool little trick. Stop this real quick. All right, so that's really enough to 
it's only four or five layers, and it's starting to sound like it's coming together, like it's some taking some sort of direction. Well, uh, usually what I do is I like to reverse things a lot. So what I'm going to do um, is basically show you how I ended up taking a piano note and reversing it and putting it at the end of my uh, song segment, my verse, per se. And it'll show you how it's going to give it the ability to change directions very quickly and unexpectedly um, for the better, for a different feel. If you hit the stop clips, it'll stop all clips. Just a little, little trick over here. Alright, so I'm going to basically play this um, C note because uh, we're in C minor right now, so I'm going to play a C. Alright, you got to remember I'm not going for sound quality again. It's going to sound a lot more beefed up once I actually get into the mixing of it. Um, and I'll make a video about that a little bit later. Um, but anyway, let's go back to the C. All right, what would that sound like reversed? Well, let's listen to it. Oops. I have to turn this on. All right, so this is playing. This is more of an effect to change directions of a track. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play this entire first segment, uh, the basic bass line, uh, the basic drums, um, the chords that I have, the little melody that I added, uh, and the reverse piano, and then we're going to change directions. I'm going to show you how I used a different bass sound and a different pattern uh, to basically continue the groove but kind of change the direction of the track. I'm going to hit the second scene, which is a different set of information. Alright, so another element can come in right there. If you notice, um, the piano note actually hit forwards. That, to me, after hearing it being reversed into itself, then playing forwards, uh, to me, could be very powerful if I change the bass line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that first scene again. Unmute this. Just give me my second bass line. Alright, that sounds pretty good. Um, this is the, ba uh, the basic drum pattern that I have going. Uh, it needs a little spiced up though, so I went ahead and created a different clip that has a couple more um, hi-hat hits in it to kind of pep it up a little bit. It's very subtle, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, I'm new to snag it, so I'm not sure how the sound quality is going to turn out. But So by pressing this button right here, uh, the scene is going to play everything on the top row until I tell it to do something else. Alright guys, um, that's it for now. If you guys want to, you can go back and pause and take a look at how I structured my MIDI patterns. Uh, kick drum on the downbeat, snare on every other downbeat, um, and the hi-hat on, uh, on the upbeat. Go ahead and add a couple more in there. Offset the timing a little bit to give it a more natural feel. Uh, and be creative with what you guys are doing. Remember, this is electronic music. It's not traditional. Use any kind of sounds that you want. Create new sounds that people have never heard before in a melodic fashion. Um, and until next time, uh, 
we're going to go ahead and I'm going to make some other videos a lot shorter covering this, uh, different aspects, uh, processing drums and bass and, you know, uh, and also shout out to Doug Jake that I mix and master. So you guys uh, go ahead and have a great night and hope you can watch my videos and learn some more stuff. Um, still trying to get used to the snagging thing, you know, listening to music on my monitors and talking over my computer microphone. Um, kind of new to me. But uh, I'm hoping that every video that I make is going to get better and better for you guys to enjoy.